Hello, it's Nanny Lynn. I'm going to tell you the story of Princess Emma Luma. She was a little girl who lived in a kingdom long ago and far away. Every day, she liked to walk out in the park near her castle and read her favorite book. It was a picture book with words about dinosaurs, full of all interesting facts. Dinosaurs who were big, dinosaurs who were little. Princess Emma Luma very much wanted to go back in time and touch real dinosaurs. She walked back to the castle and decided she could ask her father for help. Her father was the king. He could do many things. She walked into the throne room and curtsied to her father and then politely asked him for help. I want to go back 60 million years, she said. Her father explained that this might be difficult, but he would ask his scientists to create a time bubble, a machine that could take her back 60 million years. All he had to do was raise his finger, and his scientists would do as he commanded. Princess Emma was very excited, and she went to her lovely bedroom to prepare for the trip. She found her traveling hat. It matched her dress. It had lovely ostrich feathers on it. She placed it on her head and then thought, I should take a present for the dinosaurs. She reached for a bag of extra feathers because she knew that modern dinosaurs were really birds and maybe the old ones would like feathers too. She returned to the throne room thanked her father for creating a time bubble and prepared to climb in. Her dad said, be careful, dear. Don't get stuck 60 million years ago. Princess Emma climbed into the time bubble and it began to roll across the throne room floor. First it rolled in one direction until it bumped the wall. Then it began to come back the other way and get smaller and smaller as it started to speed up. It went out around the world faster and faster until it was going the speed of light. It was going so fast that it was going backwards in time. 60 million years. What would she find at the other end? But a vast plain with a volcano and troodons running across the plain. The troodons were being chased by a Tyrannosaurus rex, and up in the air were pterodactyls flying across the sky. A triceratops was walking across the plain in the other direction. He was very large and heavy, and right behind him was the Tyrannosaurus rex again. He'd given up on the troodons who were very fast, and decided to chase the Triceratops instead. But he was a little late. The Triceratops had already found a hiding place. Tyrannosaurus Rex would have to wait for his next meal. He looked around. He didn't see anything right at that moment. So he decided it's time to keep walking. Perhaps he'd find a meal later. Just at that time, Princess Emmaluma's time bubble rolled down to the earth and stopped. She climbed out and looked around for dinosaurs. She beckoned to them. Come here, she said, I have presents for you. First came a Procomsonathus, a lovely blue creature. So Princess Emma gave him some of her blue feathers to match him. Oh, he looks lovely, she said. Next came one of those baby troodons. She gave him lots of green feathers, three or four. They matched him. And then came the mother troodon. She stopped and said, really, I want feathers too. You see, I want to be just like my son, my child. And she licked Princess Emma until Princess Emma gave her green feathers too. Then the Pachycephalosaurus wanted some. He was a very handsome creature. And he looked even more handsome, she thought, with feathers. The Minmi wanted feathers too. And finally, the Stegosaurus. 
Princess Samaluma had used up almost all her feathers. She only had a few yellow and orange ones left. I hope there aren't too many more dinosaurs, she thought. But the Tyrannosaurus Rex wanted feathers, too. He was very shy around Princess Samaluma, and he backed up. Princess Samaluma decided to follow the other dinosaurs, the ones she'd given feathers to. But she didn't need her feather bag anymore. There was only a couple feathers left, so she dropped it on the ground. And then she followed the other dinosaurs to a, a forest clearing where they all began to talk to her at once. They were thanking her for the feathers, but mostly they were talking about how beautiful each one was. Each thought he was the most beautiful. Even the Tyrannosaurus Rex had come to talk about how beautiful he was. They liked the feathers very much. Oh yes, Mrs. Troodon was especially happy, but even the Minmi thought he was very handsome with feathers. Princess Emma Luma tried to explain that in the future they would evolve into birds, but the dinosaurs didn't understand, and the Tyrannosaurus Rex suddenly got hungry and frightened away the Procom Sonathus and then the baby Troodon and the mother Troodon, the Pachycephalosaurus, the Minmi, and the Stegosaurus. They're all afraid of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, said Princess Emma I think he was just yawning. Let's go see what they do next. So she followed all the dinosaurs into a clearing where a Barosaurus was just walking by to munch on a cycad tree. The other dinosaurs that had feathers were walking along, one following the other. And Princess Emma thought, they're like geese at home. They follow each other across the sky. But these dinosaurs like to play follow the leader too. She watched them go across the plain and she felt sad that she didn't have any more feathers so that she could give some to the Barasaurus too. But the Varasaurus had a very small head, and he wasn't very interested in feathers anyway. He was only interested in eating, eating the cycad leaves. Princess Emma Luma thought, I better follow them and see what they do next. She walked over to a lake, where the Procomsonathus was so afraid of the Tyrannosaurus that he jumped into the lake to hide. The baby Troodon followed. I better follow, he said, and he jumped into the lake too. Then the mother Troodon came along. I have to do what they did, she said, and she jumped into the lake also. Princess Emma Luma was worried that they might be drowning in the lake, so she ran out to the edge of the beach and stopped the other dinosaurs. Don't drown, she said, and then a new dinosaur came up. I'm a Corythosaurus, he said, and I want feathers, too. I'm sorry, Princess Emma Luma said, I don't have any more. I'm so worried about those dinosaurs that jumped in the lake. Don't worry, said the Minmi. They can swim and they can hold their breath a long time. You just wait. They'll pop up. And they did. The mother Troodon reassured Princess Emma Luma, yes, I can hold my breath a long time, but I think all our feathers have washed off. Princess Samaluma asked them to come out of the water and come up to the forest. She would tell them a story. The Pachycephalosaurus said, that's a good idea. I love stories. Come out, come out, said Princess Samaluma. I want to talk to you. They all went into the forest, but instead of hearing Princess Samaluma, they all had to talk themselves. They thought it was very unfair that some of the feathers had washed off and some dinosaurs still had feathers. Oh, grumble, grumble, they went. Princess Emma said, please be quiet. I want to talk to you about this. You're all perfectly lovely, even without feathers. Maybe I would be too, she thought. And she decided to take off her beautiful feathered hat and toss it into the forest to show them that feathers weren't necessary. Off it went, and all the dinosaurs were amazed that she had thrown away her own feathers. Even the Barasaurus licked her. What shall we do? Princess Samaluma suggested that the dinosaurs that still had feathers jump in the lake also to wash them off. Then it would be fair. So they did. Finally, the Tyrannosaurus Rex even jumped in the water, making a very large splash. And when the Pachycephalosaurus came out, 
He was beautifully golden, and the Minmi had his shiny spikes visible again. And the Stegosaurus looked proud. And finally, the Tyrannosaurus Rex came out with his big splashes, himself again without feathers. Princess Emma reassured them that they all looked grand, even without feathers. And she prepared to go back to her own time and her own castle. The time bubble rolled up, she climbed in, and off she went through the sky as the dinosaurs watched. Back to the castle park. She rolled in slowly, 60 million years later, very glad to be home again. And she rushed to the castle to draw pictures of all the dinosaurs she'd seen before she forgot. And she put the pictures up on her mirrors in her room. Then she went to the throne room to thank her father for the wonderful adventure. I'm glad you're back safely, he said. Princess Emma went back to her room to look at the pictures she had drawn. They looked beautiful even without feathers. I'm glad I had a chance to see them. She was a happy girl, and when she grew up, she became the queen and even decorated the throne room with more dinosaur pictures. Now it's time for the story of Srebrenica. Srebrenica was a little girl who was born in a country far away. Her mom and dad named her Srebrenica because they'd heard of such a land, a city named that, that it had a hard time, but then come back into a peaceful state. So they thought that would be a nice name for their new baby. They were happy with their new baby, and Papa had made a wonderful purple blanket to be her baby dress. He wrapped her up in it, and they were so happy with their brand new baby. But just as they were feeling particularly happy, they heard a storm coming up. So they ran outside to bring in the laundry and collect their other outdoor furniture to make it safe from the storm. Little Srebrenica was left on the floor to play. She looked out the window and saw the storm and wondered where her mommy and daddy had gone. Ooh, that looks scary, she thought to herself. She saw the storm roaring and roaring outside, and making a huge noise with its blowing winds. What's going to happen, she thought. Will the storm come in the window? She was just a little girl, and she began to cower down, and the storm did break in the window, and the wind blew and blew and raised the curtains and blew parts of the house away, until finally everything in the house blew away, and little Srebrenica was left all alone. She couldn't find her mommy and daddy, and they couldn't find her. They'd been blown far away, too. But then a wolf mother came along. And when the wolf mother saw little Srebrenica, she thought it was one of her pups. So she picked up Srebrenica by the beautiful purple blanket her papa had made her. And she carried Srebrenica far away, far away in the land where there were mountains and fields. Mother wolf thought she'd better take this new pup back to where her other pups were. So she carefully carried Srebrenica along until she was all the way back to her forest home, which was a cave under a log. The wolf mother carefully carried Srebrenica inside the cave. She was going to introduce her to the other pups. Here's your new sister, she told the other pups. And little Srebrenica looked around, and she saw all her new brothers and sisters. They felt very happy together, and so they fell asleep while the wolf mother was out looking for prey. They all would need to eat soon. Srebrenica and her new brothers and sisters slept away, and then Mother Wolf brought back a rat she had caught and killed. 
She left the rat on the floor of the cave and went back out to look for other prey. Shrevernitsa and her new puppy brothers and sisters slapped and slapped until Shrevernitsa began to feel hungry and they all opened their eyes and Shrevernitsa looked around and she saw the dead rat that the mother wolf had left. She sat up and reached for it, took a little bite. Mmm, this isn't bad. She tasted it and then she shared it with all her brothers and sisters and they all enjoyed a good meal. They were happy together in the wolf cave under the log. Months and years went by and the little pup wolves grew up to be full-sized wolves. And they met Patty Possum who was another wild creature of the forest and Charlie Crow who liked to tell them everything he knew all day long. The wolf pups enjoyed their friends. Charlie Crow went out to hunt for a worm. And when he found one, he shared it with his friend Shrevenitsa. She was so wild, she ate worms and spiders that she found in the forest. She was a very wild child, and she was stretching her dad's purple blanket to be a bigger and bigger dress as each year went by and she grew larger. The pups became proper wolves and went out hunting. But Shrebenitsa never learned how to be a proper wolf. She just grabbed spiders from the trees and she grabbed worms from Charlie Crow who always liked to dig them up for her. She became almost a teenager, still eating spiders. But such strange wild food always gave her a bad hair day and her hair turned many different colors and she was embarrassed. Oh, what am I to do, she thought. I'm just not normal at all. This isn't the way hair is supposed to be. She dreamed of becoming a person again, like her mother and father. She had only the strangest rememberings of them. At night she would dream about her real mother and father. But her wolf mother was very concerned because Shrevenitsa wasn't acting like the other wolf pups. Oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do with this child? She thought. How will I ever teach her? She just won't follow me and do what I do. The wolf mother went in to talk to Shrevenitsa again, but Shrevenitsa was asleep and dreaming of a great dinosaur coming and teaching her how to be a human being. That was a strange dream. Who are you? asked Shrevenitsa. And the dinosaur said, I am your teacher. You do want to be a human again, don't you? Well, let me tell you how. You have to follow the paths in the forest out to where the houses of humans are. You must follow the path until you find a house and then you must look inside and imitate the people inside because really you are one of them. You're not a wolf and I know you're not a dinosaur. We're all extinct. I'm just a dream dinosaur. And Shrebenitsa thought about it for a long time and said, well, how do I, how do I find a path? And the dream dinosaur said, well, you have to look on the ground and follow the cleanest part and it will show you the way out of the forest. So Shrevenitsa did. She followed her way out of the forest into the land of human houses where she sat and had another dream. And this time it was a purple dinosaur who told her, now there's the house, but you're going to have to go inside. Perhaps you can get in through the chimney. And that's where you have to imitate the people inside if you want to become a person like them. Okay, said Shrebenitsa. And she got ready to climb inside the house as the big purple dinosaur drifted off and Shrebenitsa woke up to follow her dream. She came inside the chimney of the house and she saw two children sleeping. Wake up, wake up, I'm stuck, she said. Pull me out. And the children who were named Hansel and Gretel pulled on her and pulled on her. We can't get you, you're stuck. What? Well, try again, said Shrebenitsa. And they pulled and pulled until suddenly all her hair fell off into their hands. Shrebenitsa was very upset. 
but she squeezed out of the fireplace herself and turned around and said, I'm going to imitate you and be like you. And Hansel and Gretel said, Mom, Dad, look at this strange person who came down the fireplace. Come and see, come and see. Shrebenitsa was worried. But then when she saw the mom and dad, they were also surprised because it was her own mom and dad. Dad saw the blanket dress, and the mom said, hey, put on regular clothes. And she gave Shrebenitsa a wig and a new dress and brought her out some shoes. We're glad to have you back, she said. And they all were sent off to school the next day. Two sisters and one brother. Shrebrenica was the oldest, because Hansel and Gretel had been born much later. At school, Shrebrenica saw a video about Princess Emma Luma and the dinosaurs. And she was very interested because she'd seen dinosaurs in her dreams, too. So instead of going to school the next day, she called for her friend Patty Possum and said, what do you think? You think I can learn to fly like Princess Emma Luma did and go into the land of the dinosaurs if I fly very fast? Patty Possum thought that was a ridiculous idea. But Shrebenica never gave up. Remember, she was a wild child. And she flapped her purple skirt up and down faster and faster and said, I can fly. See, if I just practice, I'll learn to go faster and faster. She was late for school that day. In fact, she didn't go at all. Charlie Crow and Patty Possum thought this was a very bad idea. Oh, she's going to get in trouble, said Charlie Crow. She better go to school. Patty Possum said, I think she's too wild for that. And Shrevenica had been practicing and practicing her flying until now she was able to go high in the sky. Bye-bye, she said. I'm going back 65 million years, and I'm going to look for the dinosaurs, just like Princess Emma Luma did. She flew around the Earth backwards, faster and faster and faster, faster than the speed of light, until she had gone back 65 million years. She came down to Earth in a vast desert. It was Australia. In the middle of Australia, it was all desert. She stopped flying and called for dinosaurs. Dinosaurs, dinosaurs, where are you? Where are you? Come here, come here. She didn't see any of them. Oh dear, I must have landed in a wrong place, she thought. I'll walk over to the next, over the next hill and see if I can find some dinosaurs. But as she walked along, a huge Deinonychus saw her and followed her. Mm, that looks like something to eat, it thought. Shrebrenica didn't see the Deinonychus following her. She'd gone over the next hill, and she'd seen a family of Minmies walking along that Australian plain. Oh, now they look like dinosaurs. She thought she would follow them, so she flew up to follow them along, just in time before the Deinonychus found her. She flew and flew until she saw a place that looked just like where Princess Emma had visited. There was a Euplocephalus just going over the hill, and the Minmi family was walking across the scene when Shrebenica landed. Now I feel I'm sure I'm going to see more dinosaurs, and I want to warn them about the asteroid that's going to come and destroy their world. Maybe if I tell them to store up food, they'll be able to survive. Oh, I hope they'll listen to me. And she called for them. Dinosaurs, dinosaurs, come. I must tell you something important. So all the dinosaurs came up to listen to her. The Deinonychus said, well, I want to eat you. But Shrebrenica said, no, 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 I'm not your proper prey. It's time for you to all save your proper food so that when the asteroid comes from the sky, you will be safe while the sky is full of clouds and kills all the plants and your normal food. But they didn't quite understand. I'm going to look after them, promised Shrebrenica, and she followed them off into the field. But the Deinonychus misunderstood her and just killed the first Euplocephalus he found and didn't store it away, just left it there on the ground. And then the T-Rex captured a Pachycephalosaurus and threw it to the ground. 
That was a strange way to store food, but it was the only way the dinosaurs understood. The meat eaters just killed off all the plant eaters they could find. They licked their chops and thought they could come back later to find the prey they'd killed. And they went off to find more. Shrevenitsa saw all the dead plant-eating dinosaurs and was concerned. Oh dear, I think I've told them the wrong thing. This isn't working out the way I wanted it to at all, she thought. Isn't there any way I can save any dinosaurs so they won't become extinct? What can I do, she thought. She looked over the lake and she saw that the T-Rex was even capturing the Minmies and throwing them into the water. That's not how to store food, she thought. I guess his brain is just too little to understand what I was talking about. Oh, I wish there was some way I could save a dinosaur. She looked down near the dead Pachycephalosaurus, and then she saw that there was a pile of eggs nearby. So she picked one up and saved it in her pocket to take back to the 20th century. She flew off to see if she could find more dinosaurs to warn. She flew to a field where myosauruses were gently eating flowers. They were just moving along in their normal way when Shrevenitsa came and landed in their field. She wanted to warn them. She tried to explain how they should try to save the flowers, put them in a big pile, but the Myosaurus didn't understand and thought Shrevenitsa was something to eat and licked off all her hair as if it were a flower. Ha 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 ha! Zeomy flower, thought the Myosaurus. Shrevenitsa was disgusted. She was always losing her hair. She went off to rest before her long flight back to the 20th century. I'd better take a nap first before I go, she thought, and she lay down in the field of flowers. The Myasaurus came and licked her and thought, hmm, this looks like an egg. i better sit on it to hatch it. And the Myasaurus sat. Oh, I'm ready for a new baby Myasaurus, and she licked the egg what she thought was an egg, and waited for it to hatch. Pretty soon, pretty soon, pretty soon, she thought. I like being a mom. But then the egg woke up, and it was Shrebenitsa. How dare you sit on me? I'm not an egg, said Shrebenitsa. I'm a person. You shouldn't sit on people. But the Myasaurus didn't understand. She had a very small brain, too. Shrevenitsa tried to explain to them about the asteroid that was going to come and destroy their world, but they just couldn't figure out what she was talking about. And then it happened. They saw an explosion far off on the horizon, and clouds of colored smoke came up into the sky. Shrevenitsa told them, You're almost too late. Please gather your flowers while you can and save them. But the Myosaurus didn't understand. Shrevenitsa said, It's going to get dark, and all your flowers will die. And it did become dark. And Shrevenitsa decided, I guess this is time for me to go back to the 20th century. So she picked up her skirts and flew away. It did become darker and darker, and all the flowers died. And it was so dark that the T-Rex couldn't even find any more plant eaters to kill for prey. And they all began to cry. They could see their end was near. They cried and cried in the dark, under the dark sky. Meanwhile, back in the 20th century, Charlie Crow and Patty Possum wondered where Shrevenitsa had gone. Will she ever come back, they thought. I don't know, said Charlie Crow. She's been gone a long time. Shrevenitsa came flying back and said, Look, here I am. I'm back. But she was very tired. So she took a little nap. And Charlie Crow and Patty Possum fell asleep, too. Then, when Shrevenitsa woke up, she remembered that she'd brought back the egg. So she brought it out of her pocket and gave it to Patty Possum to put in her pouch. 
Maybe it will hatch, said Charlie Crow. And they all went to sleep again to finish their nap. It became dark. And in the middle of the night, the egg did hatch. And out came a baby Pachycephalosaurus. Wake up, wake up, wake up, it said. Look, I'm here, I'm here. They all woke up to greet the baby Pachycephalosaurus. But it was still nighttime, so they all felt sleepy again. The Pachycephalosaurus went back into Patty Possum's pouch till the morning. Then it hopped out and said, Wake up, wake up. I want to start being in your century. I'm the only dinosaur you have. And Shrevenid said, You're right. And look, my hair is starting to grow back. Oh, I'm so happy. This is going to be a good day, Patty Possum said. Well, do you want your brother and sister to see this dinosaur? Oh, I don't know, said Shrevenid. said, You better hide, Pachycephalosaurus, before they see you. So Charlie Crow stepped in front of the Pachycephalosaurus, and the Pachycephalosaurus jumped back into Patty Possum's pouch just in time before Hansel and Gretel saw it. Patty Possum decided to walk off and take care of her new baby Pachycephalosaurus secretly in the forest. Shrebenitsa went to school with her brother and sister that day while Patty Possum took Pachycephalosaurus to a field in the middle of the forest and told it to eat all the plants there so it would grow up and be strong. The baby Pachycephalosaurus listened carefully and began to eat. She ate and ate and ate, and as the weeks and months went by, she grew bigger and bigger until she was as big as a tree, even taller than some of the trees. She went back to the house where Srebrenica lived and looked for Srebrenica, but Srebrenica was away at school with her brother and sister. Oh, I'm so lonely, thought Pachycephalosaurus. I wish I could find that girl again. And where is Patty Possum and Charlie Crow? Shrebenitsa was just coming home from school, and she greeted her friends, and when she saw the Pachycephalosaurus, she said, Oh, my goodness, you've grown so huge. What are we going to do with you? Charlie Crow said, Well, she's too big to fit in your house. She'll just have to wander around in the forest where there are plenty of plants to eat. Just then Hansel and Gretel came along, the others had run back into the forest, but Hansel and Gretel called for Shrevenitsa and said, Come on home. Mom doesn't like you to run away. So she did. She was becoming a normal person. But when the Pachycephalosaurus asked to come in, Shrevenitsa said, Shh, go away. You're too wild now. You have to live by yourself in the forest. The poor Pachycephalosaurus wandered through the woods in the fields looking for another Pachycephalosaurus, but she was the only one in the world. She had to live a very lonely life. Her only friends were Charlie Crow and Patty Possum, but they were so little compared to her. It was hard to even bend her head down to talk to them. She did have a lonely life. One more time she came back to Srebrenica's house and called for her. Come out, come out and play and be my friend. But Srebrenica had become a normal person then, and the poor, sad Pachycephalosaurus had to live the rest of her life all alone. That's the end of the Srebrenica story. But there's another story coming. It's coming right after this fuzzy part. And it's going to be called The Story of Bob the Blob. Once upon a time, in a medical laboratory, there was a man named Dr. Sinti. Dr. Sinti was experimenting with antibiotics. At the end of a long work day, he turned off the light and left his lab. And his dish of antibiotic became, became a kind of a blob that started growing out of it. At first it looked like a worm. Then it changed its shape again. And it began to form legs. And then it turned back into something like a fish. It swam around a little bit. And then it grew arms and a head. And it grew taller. 
It scratched its head, and eyes and a mouth and hair appeared. It had little blue boots on, and when it saw it was in a dish, it climbed out and suddenly announced, I'm Bob the Blob. I'm a new little boy. I'm going to look over here. No, I better not fall off this table. I'm going to go to the other side. But he didn't see the edge, and he did fall off onto the floor. But he was a strong little fellow, and he jumped up just in time to explore the electrical outlet, outlet he could reach. Ooh, this is exciting, but uh, I don't think it's a good idea. Then he walked over to a cage, and he met a laboratory rat. He was very interested in her. He wanted to go in the cage and become friends. So he took a running start, but crashed into the cage instead of getting in. I'm going to have to try something different, thought Bob the Blob. Maybe if I pull on these bars, I can get it. Oh, yeah, that works. I'm going to go in and play with her. He saw the lady white rat was sucking some water out of her water dispenser. And then she said, look, I'm going to show off. I can walk around and jump around in my exercise carousel, and I stay in very good shape by doing that. Aren't I wonderful? She jumped out, and Bob the Blob said, hey, I want to try that. That looks like a lot of fun. Can I do it? Okay, said the lady white rat. I'll watch you. It's your turn. So Bob the Blob squeezed into the cage and jumped into the exercise carousel. You watch. I bet I can do it even better than you, he said. And he carefully started w walking around the cage to make it go around. See? I can do it just fine. I bet I can do it even faster than you. And he tried to go faster and faster and faster as his legs went so fast they began to dissolve. And soon poor Bob the Blob was just a pile of powder. The lady white rat decided to take a little taste. Mmm, this tastes pretty good, she thought. And she licked it and licked it until it was almost all gone. Then she suddenly started to feel a little strange, and she began to turn the colors that Bob the Blob was. Oh, oh, I think I have a headache, she thought. She twisted her head back and forth and felt herself changing, and she did. She changed into something that looked more like a frog than a mouse. But it was a hungry frog, and it leapt over to get every last speck of the Bob the Blob powder. After the last little speck was eaten, it got sleepy, and the frog snored and snored and rested until suddenly it changed again and became, became something like a lizard or an iguana. The next morning, when Dr. Sinti came back, he said, Oh, my goodness, what happened to you? The lizard tried to explain to Dr. Sinti about having been a white rat but eaten Bob the Blob. Dr. Sinti didn't understand. So the lizard decided to show Dr. Sinti that she was still the white rat, and she went back into her exercise carousel to show that she was the same animal that used to climb around in it. Dr. Sinti thought, hmm, maybe I can do a new experiment with this creature. At least try to change it back into a lady white rat again. So he took the lizard and took it back to his laboratory table. He put her down and decided maybe if he injected a little more of his antibiotic in the lizard, it would turn back into a white rat. But instead, the lizard fell to the ground and began to become even bigger than it had been before. With all that new antibiotic in it, it was getting huger and huger. In fact, so large that it suddenly realized it better jump out the window before it became bigger than the whole building. Out of the window into the countryside it went, still growing and then changing again. It turned into a giant pussycat. It landed on a house and crushed it. It didn't know what it was doing. It was just becoming bigger and bigger. It jumped around, playing by itself, just the way a cat will do. But it was much bigger than any ordinary cat. It went walking along, making huge pounding sounds on the floor of the forest. 
Soon it was so big that it was as big as a mountain. And when it meowed, it roared so loud it sounded like thunder. It grew so huge that it was prancing around the northern hemisphere of the world and causing all kinds of terrible weather phenomena. Dr. Sinti back in the laboratory decided he had to do something to stop this huge cat from ruining the world. He put some anti-antibiotic in a needle and put it into a little rocket to send up to try to catch the giant cat and change it back to a normal sized animal. Off the rocket went up into the top of the world. He had aimed it carefully enough so that it went right smack into the cat's bum and the cat began to shrink again. It was still shrinking down. Dr. Sinti saw the cat, now back to a normal size, and said, come and sit on my lap while I think about how to bring you back to being a lady white rat. Maybe if we go back to the laboratory, I can inject you with something that will help. Or maybe you just have to wait and then you'll become back to your normal self. While the cat was walking along, it changed again and became a little raccoon. When they went back to the lab, the little raccoon carefully walked over to it, what used to be its cage, and waited to turn back to a lady white rat. Dr. Sinti thought, I wonder how this all happened. So he stirred his antibiotic one more time and decided to wait and watch. Oh, then it began, began that odd process of turning into many different things. Dr. Cindy called up his wife, Billy, and told her what was happening. I created a blob and it's turning into something strange. It looks like a fish or a worm or a blob and it keeps changing and now it's becoming something that's looking like a human being, a very tiny human being. Billy was excited to hear this and Dr. Sinti said, I think it's becoming a little boy, a very small boy. And he, it stepped out of the dish and kicked it away and introduced itself. I'm Bob the Blob, it said. Dr. Sinti said, hello, you are something amazing. I'm going to take you home to my boys. They're named Dylan and Jake. Will you come home with me and be their pet? And Bob the Blob thought, that sounds like a good idea. They might be more fun than the Lady White Rat. Dr. Sinti brought Bob the Blob home to his boys who were waiting on the couch for their dad. See what I brought you, he said. His name's Bob the Blob. He can be your little friend. The boys were excited to have a new friend. Oh, you're so cute. Will you come and have a bath with us? Mom's going to tell us to bathe any minute. Mama Billy did come in and said, time for your bath, boys. Go upstairs. I'll pour the water. So the boys took Bob the Blob upstairs to take a bath. Jump in, they said, and he did. But he began to dissolve, and the boys just in time reached for parts of him, and all they could save were his little blue boots. Oh, they were not happy. Dad, look what happened to the Blob the Blob. The blob dissolved. And Dad said, oh, don't worry, boys. Maybe tomorrow I can mix up a new bob for you. I guess he wasn't waterproof, was he? Meanwhile, back in the laboratory, the little raccoon was waiting to turn back into the lady white rat. It was very impatient. It paced back and forth in the floor of the cage. It was too little to ride the exercise carousel but finally it did turn back into the lady white rat and she was finally happy again. When morning came, Dr. Sinti thought, now I'm going to mix a new Bob the Blob. I wonder how long it'll take to pop out this time. But it was an instant pop. Bob said, see, I'm really getting good and practiced. I can come out instantly now. Dr. Sinti said, this time when I take you home, you have to be careful not to get in any water because it made you dissolve, and that made my boys disappointed. Okay, said Bob the Blob. I'll try to remember. So Dr. Sinti took Bob home to give him to his boys to play with. The boys had built a Lego house to keep Bob safe in. 
away from the bathtub. Here he is, said Dr. Sinti. And the boys were so happy to have their little friend back again. Now you stay away from the bathtub, they said, and don't get in any other water. Just keep yourself safe in the plastic house, please. So Bob jumped off their laps and went to explore his new house. The boys were happy that he went there so they could go off to bed. When Bob the Blob came into his plastic house, he suddenly realized there was nothing inside. Well, what am I supposed to do in here, he thought. But the boys were asleep and they didn't tell him anything. So Bob the Blob began to explore. He bounced off the walls. And then he realized his little blue boots were kind of sticky. So he thought he'd try to do some kind of exercise with them and climb up the walls with his sticky boots. This might be like riding an exercise carousel, he thought. So he climbed up one wall and across the ceiling and down the other wall. But that really wasn't very exciting. And he wondered, what can I do next? I'm getting bored in here. So he decided to go on an exploration. I'll walk about the house. And he crept into the kitchen. Oh, this is an interesting place, he thought. I wonder what I can explore in here. Those drain holes look interesting. But before he tried looking down the drains, he saw something over on the side of the sink. Wonder what that thing is, he thought. So he went over to explore. It was Dylan's Indiglo watch. Bob put it on and lit it up and thought, oh, that'll be a good help when I go down this drain to explore. So he went down the drain. Bye-bye, he said to no one in particular. I'm going to see what I can find down here. So down into the pipes under the sink he went. And he explored further and deeper under the ground until he saw a strange creature following him. And he ran as fast as he could to get away from the big, strange creature. What was that thing, he thought. I better go faster and faster to get away from it. It looked like it might be dangerous. And he kept his indiglo watch lit up to find his way down a long pipe. And he stopped to look, but there was the creature following him. Bob was frozen in fright. But then the creature turned around and said, Hi, I'm Racha La Cucaracha. I'm not going to hurt you, am I? Are you food? Bob explained, no, I'm not food. And Racha said, well, I'm only interested in food, so I won't bother you. What are you doing down here? This is my place. And little Bob said, well, I'm just exploring. You see, I'm bored in the little plastic house. And Racha La Cucaracha said, well, do you know where any food is? And Bob said, Maybe up in the kitchen where I came from. Oh, you want to follow me, said Bob. Oh, yes, 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 said Laracha La Cucaracha. So Bob held onto her antennae and pulled her toward the sink where, they, where he had come from. He thought maybe they could find some food up there for Racha La Cucaracha. Bob came out first and climbed out of the sink. And then he turned around to call for his new friend. Come up, come up, just climb up the pipes, he said. Just come up. Hurry up. I think people are waking up. We'll have to find the food before they catch us. And then we can hide. So Racha came up. She wanted to look for food. And Dylan said, uh-oh, I hear somebody coming. Quick, we've got to hide. But before they could hide, Someone came in the kitchen. It was Mother Billy. And when she saw the huge cockroach, she was frightened and disgusted. Bob, why did you bring this dirty creature into my clean kitchen? This isn't what I want at all. Go away, she said to the cockroach. But Bob and the cockroach decided to run away and hide. I hope they went back down the drain, said Billy. But as you know, they didn't. They had run farther and farther away from the sink, as far away as they could go. In fact, Bob had taken Racha to hide in his little plastic house. He thought he'd stay there until the boys woke up. 
You can stay here with me, he told Racha. And Racha said, okay, but I want some food. Where's some food? When the boys woke up, they saw what was in the little plastic house. And Dylan said, hey, Bob, you're wearing my Indiglo watch. That's mine. And Bob said, well, I'm finished with it now. You can have it back. So Dylan took it. We want some food. And then Jake said, well, I'll give you some food if you climb into my little insect keeper. He put in a plastic box for Racha to climb into. OK, now you promised some food. I want some, too, said Dylan, uh, said uh, little Bob. And Dylan told him, OK, come on out, and I'll, I'll see if I can find some food for you and for Racha. So Dylan reached his arm into the plastic house, and Bob stood on his hand while Dylan carefully took him out of the house. It was time for Dylan and Jake to get ready for school. But before Dylan left Bob to get into more trouble, he had an idea. I think I can keep you safe in here, he thought, if I keep you in this big container. He brought out a plastic container that his mother used for salad, and he put a blue plastic cup in the middle. Then he went to fetch a pitcher of lemonade and poured it in the plastic container. Now, Bob, I want you to stay safe in this cup. Don't try to reach out or you'll dissolve. I have to go to school now. But I thought I was going to get some food, said Bob. I don't like being in here all alone. Where's Racha? Well, Racha was still in the plastic insect container that Jake thought, where can I hide this? And he decided to put it under the couch cushion while he was at school. Maybe it would be safe there, but alas, Mama Billy came in to take a rest from housework, and she sat right on Racha's container. Then she went off to finish her work, and Racha was crushed under the pillow. Meanwhile, Dylan was getting very tired of being alone in the blue plastic cup, so he tried to step out, but he stuck his foot in the lemonade, and of course it dissolved again. He tried the other foot, and it dissolved too. Poor little Bob. Now he was so short he couldn't even hold himself up in the blue cup, and he sank down into the bottom of it. When Dylan came back from school, he said, Bob, where are you? And when he brought him out, poor Bob, he had no more feet, just little stumps of his boots. When Jake came home, he found Racha had been crushed, and he was sad too. Oh, dear. Poor little Bob could barely walk. And Dylan said, you better stay in the plastic house and stay safe. And Jake threw in the crushed racha, too, to hide it from his mother. And his mother came and sat down and said, boys, boys, come in here. I want to talk to you. You both have something important to learn about pets. Now, your dad was very nice to bring you Bob the Blob home. But to take care of him, you have to keep him away from water. And I don't want you ever to bring a cockroach around again. Bob did it, said the boys. Well, you have to tell Bob to keep away cockroaches. They're very dirty creatures, and we can't have them in our clean house. They carry diseases. The boys weren't happy to hear that, but they promised not to talk, play with cockroaches anymore. And Mama was satisfied. Off they went. But little Bob was just pacing around in his plastic house, being bored again. What am I supposed to do now, he thought. I don't even have Racha to play with. Jake had thrown in the crushed Racha, who was dead. And Bob thought, they never even gave me anything to eat. So he tried tasting a little bit of Racha. And he ate her almost all up. But then he realized he'd been eating his friend, and he began to cry. He was a sad little Bob the Blob. He cried himself to sleep. But then while he was sleeping, something amazing happened. Racha the Cucaracha's wings began to grow out of Bob the Blob. He was such an unstable little creature. And when Bob woke up, he realized he had something new flopping on his back. It was Racha's wings. Oh, this isn't too bad, he thought, and he sat up and started practicing flying. This is kind of fun, he thought. Now I'm just like a butterfly. And he flew out of the plastic house just as 
Mama Billy was bringing in a beautiful vase of flowers to decorate her living room. She didn't see Bob flying around as she went to do more housework. Bob said, Oh, this is fun. Look at those beautiful flowers. I'm going to go up and sniff them. Mmm, they look so pretty. I wonder where they come from. So he looked into the vase, but accidentally dipped his head in the water. Uh-oh, I think I'm losing my head, he thought. And he had. The whole top half of his head had been dissolved. Oh, I'm not staying here very well, he thought. When Dylan came home from school that day, he said, Come on outside and play, Bob. I see you've grown wings. How wonderful. Dylan took Bob out to the park, where Shrebrenica was sitting and knitting. Little Bob said, Oh, who are you? Can I play with you? And he stopped, and accidentally he got poked with one of Shrebrenica's knitting needles, and he began dripping antibiotic until he fell into a pond. Oh, dear, he's dissolved again, thought Dylan. Oh, no, thought Jake. This is terrible. We've got to tell Dad to do something about this. So later at the dinner table, Dylan suggested to his father, and Jake agreed, Dad, you've got to try to put something in the Bob the Blob mixture so that he's waterproof. Dad thought about it and thought about it, and he decided maybe he could put some reptile DNA into the mixture, and maybe then the next Bob the Blob would be waterproof. That sounds like a good idea, said Jake. Will you try it tomorrow, asked Dylan. Okay, Billy said. I hope it works. Yeah, because we like playing with Bob the Blob, but he dissolves so easily. So the next day, when Dr. Sinti went to his laboratory, he mixed some DNA from lizards into the antibiotic mixture. I hope this works, he said. And he waited for Bob to pop out, and this time Bob popped out with a lizard tail. Is this going to make me waterproof? I hope so, said Dr. Sinti. I'm going to take you home and we'll try a test to see if you've become waterproof. Oh, I hope it's a good test, said Bob the Blob. I don't want to dissolve again. Dr. Sinti said, well, I'll just create you over and over until I get it right. And so he took the new lizard tail Bob the Blob home to the boys. When he came in, he said, look what I've got for you now. Bob the Blob has a tail. Oh, that's interesting, said Jake. And the boys looked at their new pet, and Bob the Blob tried to stay right between them and stay safe. Jake said, well, we have to try the test right away. And Dylan said, Mom, Mom, please fill the sink with water, and we're going to test the new Bob the Blob and see if he's waterproof. I think he looks cute with a tail, don't you? And Jake said, oh, yeah. Mama Billy went into the kitchen and began to fill the sink with water. This was going to be an experiment, just like some of the ones Dr. Sinti did in his laboratory. Okay, boys, the sink's full. You can bring in the lizard Bob now. So the boys came in to watch Bob in his test. I don't know that I want to try this, said little Bob the Blob. Oh, you're a scaredy cat, said Dylan. I guess you're going to have to push him in, said Jake. You think you can do that? Oh, don't, don't. I'm scared, said Bob. But Dylan said, we got to try it. And he pushed little Bob into the water. Oh, no, said Jake. Look, he's dissolved again. What are we going to do? Poor Dad, he can't seem to make it right. But then Bob, Lizard Bob popped out and said, see, it worked. But because the boys had called him a fraidy cat, he turned into a cat. He said, look, now I'm Bob Cat and I still feel scared. I don't want to go near that water. So he trotted off the sink and scrambled to the living room through the dining room. The boy said, well, we like you as a cat. The bobcat stood up and tried to tell the boys, never put me near water again. I really didn't like it. And the boy said, oh, you don't have to be afraid. We like you as a cat. We always wanted a pet. 
you can come out and play with us. So the new bobcat came out to play, but even outside he felt scared. He thought he heard a mouse, or maybe it was a bird squeaking. And he said, oh dear, I'm scared, and he jumped up into the tree. And the boy said, you don't have to be scared, Bob. We're going to take good care of you. Come on back to the house and be our pet. Mom and Dad will feed you cat food, and you'll be happy. And you can even sleep with us, maybe, said Dylan. So the scared bobcat jumped down onto Dylan's shoulders as they went back inside. At dinner that evening, Dylan asked, Please, can we keep Bob Cat now that he's not a blob anymore? Yeah, we want him to be our regular pet and live with us forever, said Jake. Mama said, that sounds like a good idea, if we can just keep him being a cat. Dylan said, I want to sleep with him tonight in my bed. Will, he, will you let me? And Mom and Dad said, okay, as long as you let Jake do it the next night. Yeah, I want to turn the next night, said Jake. And Dylan said, thank you for letting us have a pet. We really like Bob the Blob as a Bob cat. He's so cute and fuzzy. So that night, Dylan slept with the new pet, Bobcat, and had a nice, soft evening of rest. And the next night, it was Jake's turn. Jake really loved having Bobcat sleep with him, too. And he dreamed of Bobcat and Bob the Blob. And as he dreamed, the pussycat turned to Bob the Blob a little bit, because he was still very unstable. But finally he decided to stay a cat. And that was the end, because they stayed that way forever after. The boys really loved their pet, Bob. I hope you like these stories from Nanny Lynn Videos. Bye-bye.